Okay, so thank you for being here. Um, I am going to talk about like this idea of this is not this idea of uh, bootstrapping. This will be uh, an accented talk in several senses. The first one is that is opinionated, is experienced by is informed by, by my experience and my context, and also I have an accent. Uh, I am in Spanish um, like chatty and funny, and in English I am silent and mysterious. So. Thank you for dealing with this mysterious version of myself, like giving this talk, and for, uh, like, I don't know, even eventual typos and mispronunciation. Um, I will talk about like, this idea of, of solidarity and circular economies, um, and I will take like, a several uh, authors' approach. Um, the idea is that um, metrics encourage certain kind of behaviors. If you put a metric in a system, you are going to encourage this kind of uh, the behavior that the metrics uh, um, values inside the system. Uh, and we know the, the um, um, incentive we have from the system of today. These, by the way, are real pictures. They are not some kind of sci-fi, i.e. Uh, artificial intelligence thing. They are, they are like real places in the real world uh, that are uh, responding to the, to the metrics we have today. And as the previous uh, speaker talks, uh, we have like these kind of incentives uh, that are about like, how we value uh, things and how money represents value. So uh, Brett Scott says that um, if we want to, to see the irreality of money, we just need to invent our own one. And we could do that, for example, with uh, creating inflationary money. It's, it's money that, that encourages accumulation. Bitcoin, for example, we can have deflationary uh, money, like the, I don't know, uh, Venezuela and Bolivian, for example, that encourage uh, in, uh, interchange, because the stuff values less and less with the time. We have local monies, like, I don't know, el peso de chapinero, the British pound, like a, a pound in a particular place, uh, that encourage visiting, and we can have uh, time banks that encourage uh, experiences exchanges. So depending on the, on the kind of money we create, we create like, different incentives for different people uh, behaving in different ways. And uh, Arthur Brooke from the Holochain Project says that we can think in, uh, in wealth as a way of, of thinking in living systems. Um, and in that case, if we are thinking in that, we can have, uh, is, is the font size uh, good enough? Is, is fine? Or you, do you need a little bit of, okay, it's fine. Okay, so we can go from, from bottom to up in this, kind of, in this kind of different ways of representation. So uh, we, can, we can have um, the current economy that is about parts and products. Uh, like, I don't know, a pound of coffee, uh, a little of, of blood. Of blood. And, and in this case, you have like a scarcity, you value things in rational numbers, and you can have interchangeable wealth. You can think in uh, system properties. In this case, you cannot exchange anything for anything else because you are interested in the, in the properties of the system. So for example, organic coffee is not the same as any coffee. Or uh, a certain kind of blue type is not as the same as any other. Uh, and in this case, you are talking about sufficiency, ah, uh, measurable, uh, well, uh, and measurable wealth. Uh, and, or you can, or you can uh, like measure system performance. And in that case, for example, you have I don't know the first price in organic coffee, and uh, at that moment you are you are uh, talking about vitality. You have classification system, for example, medals and classific 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 um, wealth that you can classify. Uh, so in that case, uh, the idea is that uh, this classification doesn't work all the time. You are the first medal in, coffee, in organic coffee a particular moment in a particular time. So the, the less you are in this kind of uh, abstraction, the, the way that you start to value more things, uh, exchangeability is sacrificed because you are interested in, in particular properties. Uh, so yeah, here a pound of coffee is as good as many other uh, as any other, but over here uh, no. A particular coffee in a particular moment that won a particular price. Um, and you can have, for example, a relationship between, between systems. Uh, for example, uh, uh, I don't know, certified organic. Yeah, coffee is my, my default metaphor because I am from Colombia. So. Um, and in that case, uh, you are thinking about like harmony, harmony and, and uh, 
uh, nameable richness, like the, the, the thing that you can put this kind of name to this kind of richness. Uh, and you can have like uh, evolutive system capacity. In this case, you are thinking about possible richness. So the issue is that uh, we value stuff in different ways. And the value that we put on the monetary system around a particular way of value encourages a particular way of behavior. Um, so for example, we have like this idea of the credit commons. So if we want credit, we don't need to go always to the bank. We can have like, like uh, yeah, credit as a commons. In fact, there is this network, uh, creditcommons.net, uh, credit that uh, create uh, an accounting system that allows the interchange of any local currency with any other. And it's an open protocol built on hundreds of existing initiatives. It has some monetary principles. Uh, it has a decentralized uh, credit and infrastructure, and it scales fractally. The idea that if we have different kinds of wealth, we measure in different uh, kinds also. We have different kinds of, of measure. And also, um, we don't need the same money for everything. It's kind of crazy that if, we, if I want to go with an exchange with a local partner or a friend, like here, I need to go to the, to the complete monetary system to, I don't know, buy a beer over here. It's, it's kind of crazy, no? We, we should have like this kind of local exchange with local people without entering into the complete bank system. But we don't have that because credit is not a commons. It's not, it's not, it's not something that we can give to each other. So we have this idea of alternative economies that have different value flows. Uh, and there are a lot of, of alternative economies, like for example, uh, feminist economies, indigenous economies, economies of care and reciprocity, that are old, that are between us, uh, among us, long time ago. Uh, but the capitalist system is only showing us as a particular kind of economy, with a particular kind of metric, with a particular kind of behavior. And we are like entangling this uh, only way. But the issue is that these economies are with us uh, like uh, long uh, time uh, before. Uh, and in fact, we were talking about like, um, yeah, uh, if you saw the, the Jeremy uh, uh, Rushkov talk about like this idea, you need to ask for the taladro, for the driller. And if you do that, uh, you are afraid because maybe your neighborhood is going to ask you back for, I don't know, the next picnic or something like that. It's like, yeah, that's what happens all the time in the global south. It's like, yeah, we are asking each other for the stuff because we need each other. We don't want to have our own driller all the time. Uh, and, and these kind of economies are there maybe because of scarcity, but scarcity creates these kind of networks of solidarity also. Um, so. The idea is that we could, uh, we could have a method of bootstrapping these alternative economies. I will show you like this kind of bootstrapping. And for that, um, my idea is to, to, to like the, let's say, technical um, correlate or materiality that is going to support this kind of uh, alternative economies. So we have this kind of algorithmic dysmorphia. Because we have uh, tools and technologies that today are reinforcing and amplifying the world we struggle with. Um, so it's, it's, uh, if you see this uh, um, discourse about, I don't know, uh, Bitcoin or Ethereum or this crypto bros uh, uh, discourse, it's about truceless economies that are worldwide scale, that are between strangers, that are wasteful in resource and energy that are uh, trying to enforce a global consensus, that are always online. But this is not the world we have. This is the world we struggle with. And instead, uh, we are not, with our technology, we are not prototyping, announcing, and uh, inhabiting the words we need. And I am thinking about words in plural. Uh, instead of this unique and convergent world, where all live at the same time, we have a world of words, uh, or we should that is communitary, that is small, that is trustworthy, where consensus is local, where we can work with offline or, or intermittent connectivity. And if we are thinking in this kind of alternative um, economies, um, how we can put technology that encourages this kind of alternative economies? Um, and there is this uh, book of, um, of Landon Winner that ask, ask if, the, if the technology has politics, if, if technology can be neutral. He took uh, an allegory from Platon, in fact, and he, he says, okay, a chip can be a democracy. 
you have a sailing ship? Can you have like, uh, I don't know, a collective that is deciding collectively where to go each time? You cannot if you want to arrive safe. You need to have a captain and something in the, someone in the machines and someone in the sail, like this kind of a strong division of labor and also um, a discourse of power about how this distribution of labor is managed. Uh, so there is some kind of technology that has an implicit discourse of power. And the issue is that um, we have also that in the, in the net. So for example, when we, when we opt with, with client server uh, architectures, we are opting uh, with, uh, the, with a centralized paradigm, with everybody is connected to the same place. Uh, if we have something like, like Mastodon, for example, you know, this alternative to Twitter that is uh, federated, uh, we have like this, uh, let's say, more uh, uh, decentralized, it's not totally decentralized, but it's more decentralized uh, way of working because people is like, or, or the email, for example, people is connected to one server and that server is connected to another and that other server is connected with more people. Or we can have stuff like, like uh, uh, Secure Scuttlebot or BitTorrent that are totally distributed, like peers connected between each other. Or we can have something like, like Noster that is like real, uh, relay client protocols. Um, so when we choose this kind of ar architectures, we are choosing about um, who has the power for how long and how power is distributed or not. Uh, because we know now, now that this kind of architecture that are the one that we are using today in information systems can be copted by, I don't know, your favorite uh, uh, egomaniac billionaire, for example, and, and they can create like these kind of personal playgrounds for their ego. Uh, uh, but we can choose a small community-owned infrastructures uh, and even in these cases, with Mastodon, for example, we are opting for stuff that is like confined in, in particular places with particular dynamics of power. So um, we could have another way of approaching this kind of, of uh, like, like making, we can make more explicit the way that technology embodies a discourse of power. And we can choose in a more explicit way which kind of technology we want to have with us for particular uh, configurations of power, of power. So for example, there is a, a set of exercises that we are doing uh, back in Colombia that are regarding with several discourses uh, resonant with the global north, but not, not in dialogue with that, but not inspired for, uh, uh, with the, by the global north. It's kind of uh, using the global north history as a repository of experiences, but not as a destiny. It's not that the global south needs to be too, uh, like the global north. It's more like, okay, you are doing this over, over there, we want to do this over here, how can we use the history of the global north as an inventory of possibilities, not as a destiny? Uh, so there is this discourse about like protocols, not apps. So apps is, are like these silos of, of data and experience, and they are silos like in the dystopic uh, movie. Like you, have you seen? Well, well, there is a series that is called Silo. It's a dystopic one, and it's like what we have today. So, but, but uh, the only difference is that we have that for real, not in the series, but uh, yeah, in social media. Uh, but in the case of protocol, they are pre-made an extensible ar uh, ar arrangement on communication and action. Uh, and we have several kind of protocols, for example, what is called cheat coin protocols, protocols that are like pain about everything and gamifying everything. Uh, we have relay protocols that uh, are protocols where you can like send information to a relay and, and going back down to another client. But the relay is kind of dumb, doesn't do a lot. Doesn't do a lot. And you, we can have uh, pure P2P protocols. We're going to talk about these two in a, in a future work, workshop. I will tell you about that. So um, we could think in, in a, a kind of technology that uh, conveys our sense of future. So with the Cypher space, we have hyperlinks that produce hypertext. They point to directions. If you lose a URL or something is moved over there, you are lost uh, in the sense that you cannot navigate back. And we have the cipher space, where cipher links that are pointing to a particular uh, hash of the information, a signature of the information, uh, gives you cipher, cipher text, like text that is uh, with this dual relationship between, between uh, cryptographic signatures and content. 
And there are a lot of protocols that are working with this idea. So one is Secure Scuttlebot that has this kind of really low cost blockchain. It's a blockchain in the sense that it's a, a set of uh, blocks of information that are chained together using these uh, cipher links, these links that are pointing to content. So you can know the sequence of, of information, but you are not mining or using all these, uh, let's say, expensive metaphors about how, 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 how can we build uh, trust um, relationships of, of, of information. Um, and there is Noster that is, is using kind of the same kind of technology. Uh, you have these relays, and the people has public and private case. The public key is like their username, and the private case is like the password. But, but we can have uh, our information with us. It's not in a single place where our identity or, and our messages and our information is controlled by a third party, and it's only there. You, we can have like copies in several places, and we can communicate with each other in a, in a secure way. Um, so we are using this kind of blockchains in several ways. One of those is uh, for creating Minipedia. It's uh, like a... Yeah, we're using like uh, kind of a GitHub technology to create slices of, of Wikipedia and to put that information there and to replicate the history of the articles over there so we can bifurcate the story. So it's like having the same history but being able to, to, to bifurcate that story so we can put that in several places. And um, the idea is that we can keep the diffs, the differ difference, differences of information, but at the same time we can uh, like create uh, a peer-to-peer -peer network of or acknowledge that is resilient and is uh, being supported with, with this kind of blockchains. And we can, well, we have also uh, Graphoscopio. Graphoscopio is a software I made for my PhD. And it's also a community that is working in this idea of appropriating uh, technology um, in, the, in the global south or, or with global south needs. Uh, and it's technology that is like, mm, I call it interstitial technology in the sense that this technology is, is about building bridges between uh, information systems. So it's not about like having a, a single point of, of information or modifying system from inside, but modify, modifying systems between uh, the connections of places. Um, and we have like this wax on, wax off uh, reflective practice. So the idea is that we create data narratives instead of apps. And, and we start to understand how the systems work and document that with this software that we are like extending. Uh, and we, we are also not only working in the virtual, but also we are working in, in analog uh, places. So oops, I will show you. So the idea is that we, uh, we meet to do groundwork, to prepare terrains for doing a mushroom cultivation, for example, or to seed, or to, or to grow mushrooms or to collect them. So we have already these practices over there. Uh, and we are working with an economy that is an economy that is already caring about resources and being sustainable. Uh, and we, what, we what we are trying to do is to get this uh, in a more uh, scalable way. So it's about having economies that, is for, that are for small groups that are related with, with this uh, grown world that we are doing already, and to having technologies that support this kind of a change. Um, and we are also there to prototype. This is our last prototype. We are doing uh, a domo. And this domo is to, to grow our own mushrooms over there. Uh, and yeah, we are doing stuff that is analog and digital. And at some point, we hope to have it uh, here. This is a domo that is already, it's not our domo, but it's a, uh, it's a domo that is already in, uh, in Armenia, in the coffee region in Colombia. And we want to have to, our own domo to, to do this stuff. So the idea is that we are working in this uh, money that is called Reciproca, that thinks about uh, money uh, or community, community money as a set of circulating promises, some fulfilled and some pending. And we are trying to use these distributed blockchains that are cheap, so we can exchange these promises inside these small communities uh, to, to support these kind of practices that we are already having over there. Um, so the idea is to, to use this technology so we can, um, let's say, fight against the illusion of linear economy. So instead of having this illusion of linear economy where, where we don't care about where the stuff is coming from, and where it's uh, arriving at the end of our use, or use, what we are doing is, is taking these cycles before the stuff is uh, 
Yeah, it's, before the stuff is um, in the in the waste bin. Uh, and we are doing a small prototype. This is uh, uh, stuff that is already happening. So we are exchanging now services and products in this way. And we are exchanging back promises in this other way. So the idea is that we have these small networks, and we are exchanging promises. And we want to scale that using these distributed blockchains that use this uh, public and private key infrastructure to support these commons. Um, so we're going to make a, a prototype in Republica about uh, using this Noster Relay protocol to create these promises that we can exchange in a small scale. Uh, we can meet on, the, on a workshop on Wednesday. We're going to, to work in, in, for the, yeah, 15 to 16 hours. Um, yeah, and here is more info. So in conclusion, the idea is that we can have different kind of technology that supports different kinds of metrics and economies. And we already have this technology among us, but we are not using this technology for this kind of particular economies because we have this like algorithmic dysmorphia. So if we can use another algorithms and another technologies to understand economies in a different ways, uh, we can bootstrap the words we want to inhabit. And for that, we need to build these small scale protocols that are, and, and prototypes that are not related with big economy, but with supporting what is already happening inside the communities. This is an example of what we are doing in the coffee region, and, and also of exchanges that we are doing uh, already in, in yeah, our local community. Um, because we have these uh, data stories practices, we want to create a data story that allows us to explore this future uh, with these prototypes and these, uh, let's say, alternative blockchains to, to exchange promises and to see that economy can be also a set of promises that are circulating in small communities and between communities. Yeah, that was my, my talk, uh, the core of it, so thank you. So uh, we have a couple of minutes left, so we have time for questions. If you have questions, please come up to one of those two microphones to ask the question, and please have a question. Uh, I have one. These blockchains you're talking about, these are just local programs, like a hash, converted yes. to a hash, or these Bitcoin-like monstrous... No. no, they are not. The idea is to have these, these other blockchains that are local, and that are, you, you have, what you have is a public and private key. Uh, keys and these keys allow you to know who has a, a promise with who and if if that promise is fulfilled or not uh, and you have like an algorithmic witness so there is a program who knows which promises are circulating inside the network but they are local uh, promises and they don't use computing power only to produce the information and to make that uh, circulate but they are not like, you, know, you don't need to meet to mind anything to produce this information. But they are secure anyway. Thank you, muchas gracias por la presentación. Gracias. Um, thank you for, for inviting us to that great journey. Um, I came five minutes later, so maybe I got the beginning detail information not, but is there, if I understood correctly, you are a um, type of community and you're working together analog and digital as well. Yeah. You're trying new forms of living together yeah. using digital tools, but as well doing agriculture, autonomous agriculture. Do you live autonomously? You are a collective or? No, we don't. We, we, uh, each of us has their own job and uh, live in several places. Uh, I am, for example, a professor in Bogota. These, these pictures are from the coffee region in Armenia. Uh, but we work together and we celebrate together and we prototype together and we do stuff in the analog world and in the di digital world. But we don't try to do apps. We try to do like these uh, data narratives that explain ourselves uh, or exploration. Uh, so yeah, that's that's our idea. And we are now in because we are this this prototype is prototype is kind of mature. It's, it's working, but we want to make an exploration of how we can like scale. Horizontally, it's not about more people, but more different collectives doing this kind of stuff or connecting better. So we need to to do the promises scalable in a way, but in a, in a, in a small scale. Yeah, that's what we are trying to do. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.